What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Cigars and Everything Else podcast. Episode 33. 33. Where we at, yes, sir? Man, we got so many ways we can go with it. We can go uh, so. Patrick Ewing. We can go Pat Ewing. Uh, Kareem. Definitely Kareem. We could do GOAT. We can do Grant Hill. One of the most underrated, never hit his potential guys. Yeah. Dynamic or, for his era. Yeah. Or we can go Scotty Pippen. Pip. How you go Pip? Oh, how you go Pip over uh, Larry Legend? <laughs> we ain't gonna consider Larry hey, man. Legend. Yeah, we got hey, th- hey, throw throw him in there, throw Larry in there. I had I had to put Scotty Pippen in there, man. You know how I feel about Scotty. I didn't know if you was gonna actually acknowledge Scotty and whatnot, man. <laughs> hey, uh, we got some baseballers, man. We got uh, I think uh, Jose Canseco. Okay. Okay. You know, since we don't ever show them love, even though they sports stink, you know what I'm saying? Jose Canseco, man, that was that's that's a throwback right there. Throwback, man. Cause the Canseco episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're gonna call it the Canseco episode. <laughs> nah. That don't feel good. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't feel, feel good. good. That don't feel good to the tone going nah, on. Nah, 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 nah. Uh the right. Mike Piazza episode. Nah. Yeah. Yeah, nah. Sorry, baseball. Your sport stinks. We we not gonna roll with you. I mean, uh, may, maybe maybe the names ring bells for other people, but nah, not for me. Hey, we gonna say it's the uh, Kareem episode, and for y'all that like Piazza or uh, Conseco, man, y'all fill in the blank. And in y'all ears, y'all just heard that when we said that, you know. But this one's for y'all. If y'all like Piazza and Conseco, man, it's it. But it's the Kareem episode, man. I'm gonna roll Kareem with that. episode. All right, we'll yes, do it. Sir. We'll do it. All right. Well, look, my right, name man. is Jared. Uh, my co-host is Denzel, and we're going to get into some cigar talk and a little bit of everything else. Now, before we get into everything else, man, we were talking off camera, so we're going we gonna, to let's get into some 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 uh, other stuff real quick. And then we're going to join. We're going to let the stars come in right after that with a proper introduction. All right. But man, what hey, you got? random question. What's your uh, mm-hmm. most embarrassing moment that you can think of, man? And we'll say from. Not in recent life, you know, from childhood, you know. And when I say childhood, anything 21 and under. You got a moment? Man, uh, we had we got a lot of college years that was embarrassing. Glad we didn't get a lot of those on film. Glad there was no TikTok and no Instagram when we was in college. <laughs> it would have been, uh, right? <laughs> been reels full of um, embarrassing moments. <laughs> yeah, just phew, moments. Man. We were talking off camera, man, and I said that I uh, fell in slow motion in front of the boys. I fell face first into a table. Just slow with my head to the side, and it landed here so <laughs> softly. And I just was looking them both in the eyes, like the whole way down. And they said, "I look like, like somebody helped me. Save me! Nobody <laughs> saved me. They just laughed at me to to tears, man." So I had another embarrassing moment. I didn't have a whole lot of uh-huh. but one other moment. You remember when it snowed that year, and we had that big snowball fight in the dorm? I might not have been around for that. I might not have okay. been around for that. One. There was a snowball well, fight that occurred. Have. And um, mm-hmm. I popped my head. We were on the second floor of my dorm. And I peeked around the corner of the window just in time for a girl to hit me dead in the face with a <laughs> snowball. She hit me dead on. I Perfect didn't get out of the way of it or nothing. If I'd have waited one more second, it'd have zoomed by and then I'd have looked out the window. But instead. Got you. Boom. Yeah, oh, it was right so there. cold. She got me good. <laughs> I guess uh, if I had to pick one. It would probably be from college, and I'm pretty sure you remember this. So we was walking the campus uh, one night. I don't know why. I don't know where we're going or where we're coming from. But for some reason, there was a beer bottle sitting on uh, some little stoop area thing. Right. For some reason, I have no idea why, some told me to pick up this beer bottle and act like I'm about to swing it or something. Like, I'm like, this weird action. Not thinking that the beer bottle had beer in it. I'm not, I don't even know why. I pick it up, boom, playing like joking, right? And then the beer just falls all over me, all over my jacket, <laughs> all over my clothes. And I had to walk around for the rest of the night, smelling like I was just, I took a bath in beer. <laughs> why I did that, I can't even tell you why. What 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 was the urge? I have no idea. <laughs> but y'all were around like, like, why did you do that? 
<laughs> I have no idea. I'm just saying, just drowned in, uh, in beer. Why? I have no idea, man. Man, why? You know what's crazy, though? In <laughs> fairness to you, that beer bottle should have been empty. What college student leaves a three-fourths full beer bottle just sitting there? Or maybe it wasn't three just sitting there. I don't know. You you picked it up. You it know. was... You, I'm saying it was it was full enough for me to be drowned in it. You and at the time, I, I was the only at least one who a half a bottle. I was the only one in the crew who didn't drink, but that I was, smelled the most like alcohol than anybody else. <laughs> that was the idea of it all. <laughs> I'm smelling like the drunk, and I didn't even drink. Yeah. Out of everybody, and I'm sitting there just smelling like I'm just drowned in, in in beer. And the fact that you didn't drink probably had to make that experience worse for you. Just the smell, having to smell something that you didn't enjoy anyway. <laughs> and I didn't go back to my dorm right away. Like, I can't remember how far away we were, but it was just, all right, man, I'm going to just suck this one up. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is, man. <laughs> Hey, man, y'all, everybody had those moments, man. You know, we just shared some moments with y'all, man, that of, of our own little downfalls and misfortunes and whatnot. Hell, man, you know, you keep watching the show, man. If we keep doing these videos, you might see some misfortunes with these cigars and whatnot. I dropped ashes in my lap last episode. You know, whoever's... <laughs> pay close attention. You caught it? I caught you it. Said you caught it? Well, there you go, I caught man. it. You know, it happens, man. You know, we all have our, our, our L's, man, that we take along the way. But, man, I have stalled long enough. Let's get into the stars of the show. I'll right, go let's first. Talk about it. What we got? I have a Nika... Bastica, 6x60 Adobe Gordo by Drew Estate. Boom, there you go okay, right we'll there. Go. Get my now, face bring, bring out of the camera. Let's see. There it is. It, ah, it ain't going to focus. Too much hair. Uh, with that being said, <laughs> let me see. Do I have my specs on the cigar? I didn't check there. No, it doesn't. But I did do my research for you. So let me just let you know what I'm working with here. Uh, this particular cigar is going to be an Ecuadorian wrapper with a Brazilian binder and a Nicaraguan uh, filler is what I'm working with. Nice. So, we like that. We like it. We like it. We like it. All right. Well, I hope it's a good smoke, man. We're going to see. Drew Estate. Let's see if we can um, bounce back off that um, acid. You know what I'm saying? Drew Estate's acid. I, I don't think they'll let us down. Not, not two uh, weekends in a row. We're going to see. Two episodes back to back. All right, man. So check this out. So today was one of those uh, game time moment decisions. Which way I wanted to go with this. I picked up a CAO. Got okay. this guy right here. And not a flavor one. Um, or at least I didn't think it was a flavor one. Doesn't look like one of the flavor ones. So I was curious to see these other cigar brands who usually do the flavor cigars and try to journey into some of their non-flavored types and see how well they do that. Um, right. <laughs> so that was, that, that was an option. But then I came across Romeo. Romeo y Julieta. Uh, my first cigar smoke ever. So I didn't find the one, my first cigar, but I haven't revisited Romeo in a long time. And Romeo was one of the, it was the first cigar, cigar brand I've ever smoked. So I wanted to kind of come back to Romeo and try out some Romeo. I haven't had them in a while. Um, haven't tried any different types of Romeos in a phew, several several years. So I picked up the uh, Romeo San Andreas, and I think that's what we're going to go with today. <clears throat> the Romeo San Andreas. That's pretty. San Andreas. That, that, that good torpedo. Hey, All right. So I, I picked this up without looking at any specs. So wh whatever I get is... Phew, Whatever we get, I have no expectation going to this. Um, so you didn't find out the wrapper or the binder or nothing for us, the filler, none of that stuff. I mean, I, I have, I have it pulled up. I have it pulled up, but going into it, picking it up, and you know, not knowing anything about the cigar, yeah, it was just, it, it is what it is. So uh, the wrapper is San Andreas, um, the origins uh, Nicaragua, um, filler Dominican and Nicaraguan, and binders Nicaraguan as well. So okay. that's what we're looking at. We got a more of a Maduro wrapper. So we got that dark wrapper. Um, looking like on a profile, we're looking at possibly um, a heavy smoke. Um, we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll see how the body is. So we're looking at a full body smoke today, and we'll get this guy a test run and see what happens, man. Let's do it. 
I'm uh, punching. I have a punch on the end of my lighter, my torch. So uh, I'm running with a punch today. How about you? Right. Well, you ain't you ain't got much option. Uh, I won't even ask you. Straight cut. Yeah. Straight cut. I'm in it. No, nah, I mean we could do the. Uh, we found out. You did uh, a couple last episodes ago. On one. Yeah. You did the V on a torpedo, and, and it came out pretty well. I was a little nervous getting it uh, getting it cut, but we were successful. Made it happen, and boom, it was a good smoke, man. Yeah, you impressed me with that. All right, so we're going to light with the cedar spill. So what's up with the matches, man? I ain't see you uh, one match short in a long time. Man, you know, I got my cedar stick, so I wasn't going to. But don't challenge me, brother. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm prepared to get to work if need be. Always prepared. That my okay. intentions, though. Yeah. True aficionado. Yeah, but I don't. I didn't intend to. Hey, while you uh, while you get started on your toasting and whatnot, I would like to know because you said you revisited that asset from last week, and uh, I want to hear your thoughts on it. Oh man. Uh, usually, typically. When you go back and you revisit a cigar, nine times out of ten, it's not as good as it was when you first smoked it. So I don't know what I was thinking, thinking it was going to get any better, um, picking it up and trying it again, or at least finishing it. You know, I don't like to let a cigar go to waste. So I had some more time, I think the next evening, and, you know, just want to go ahead and finish it up. A couple of puffs in, it did not age well. It is not one of those cigars that you want to save for later. You know, flavor was pretty much gone. So the the um the features that allowed the smoke to be more enjoyable had dissipated by this point. So it was a couple of puffs in. It's like there's no point to smoke the cigar. I put it back out and I moved on to the next. Um so not a fan. Not a fan. Not much at all. It did it didn't win me in the in in in, in the second relight. So didn't win you in the first. Then with me in the first, and it, it was it was no salvage in it at that point. So here we go. We just let it let it be, and I moved on to something else. It's like, why struggle through a smoke if I don't have to? Sounds like you'll never smoke an acid again. Is that the case? You know what? I mean, even though I did say I could see myself smoking that one again, I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. More likely than not, I probably wouldn't. There's too many other good options out there. You know, I know CAO, they have a lot of good flavors. Why not grab that? If I have them side by side, why not grab it? If you got some Javas around, some fat bottoms, I'm grabbing it. You know, acid has to be the only flavor cigar, and I have to be in an extremely flavor mood to go ahead and pick it up. It's got to be the only option. Hey, man. Understood. You make a great point, though. You know what I'm saying? There's so much to choose from. Why sit around and keep going back to something you didn't have a good experience from? You know what I'm saying? Bro. Even though we may do it as cigar nerds, you know what I'm saying? Just to be like, all right, what if, you know, it was this scenario, let me give it another shot. Right. Or if it's something right. that's popular enough that you say, hey, I had a bad experience, but people love this. Let me try again because maybe it's a one-off. Yeah. But outside of that, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why? Like, if it's just something regular that's not hyped up, you know, why? Mm -hmm. And acid doesn't have that height. It doesn't have that height. It's a name that's out there, but it doesn't have the height. Yeah, popular with no height. It's redundant yeah. as that. So, um, I mean, you know, <laughs> contradictory, right? Contradictory, yeah. Sorry, I didn't graduate right. college. Cut it out. Hey, so what you got pairing with your um with your stick today, man? I'm just back on the tequila, man. I'm back on the tequila. Okay. Yeah, tequila. Yeah. Dark tequila. Yeah, yeah. Back on hey. the brown tequila. So I'm here with the um with the bamboo. Bamboo. Got some lemonade with it. Yeah. So we're gonna get a splash. I already got the already got the lemonade in the cup. Um I got some mug. club soda. Some club soda with it. Say what? Copper mug. Copper mug. Hey man, so um, styrofoam cup, man, you got me looking like a hood player. You know what I'm saying? Why are you sitting around with, hey, the, with the good etiquette? 
and it ain't double cup. <laughs> I know I missed out on on I, the one demographic I could have satisfied. I missed it because I didn't double cup, man. Oh, come on, no, man. man! Come on, man! What am I doing? Hey, this stick, man, Letting is down. spicy. Is it okay? We got a spicy yeah, that, boy. That spicy black pepper is hitting, man. You know, with a little earthiness. I'm like, whoo! Please let something else come on in here, Drew. What, what did you do to me? <laughs> so we got some strong pepper off the cap. Okay, all right. Hey, uh, my Romeo, it's pretty smooth in the, in, 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 the, in the beginning. Yeah, I'm kind of enjoying. It. I took maybe three puffs so far. Um, not expect, not not knowing what to expect. Right. And real smooth, real smooth. So now we're gonna see how the bamboo is gonna complement these next few puffs as we as, as we go along. So we got some smooth. A little bit of a little bit of cocoa, a little bit of chocolate, man. Right. Some oat. Yeah, 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 yeah. And no pepper, no pepper just yet. Okay, I ain't mad at that, man. Speaking of, uh, I said cigar nerd. Speaking of nerds, you know, I'm gonna nerd out yeah. a little bit more with you for a little moment. Then after that, we'll move into <laughs> some other stuff, you know. But uh, so. I, I done found this YouTube channel to be like playing like old fighting games. He like usually has Street Fighter and he'll be combining yeah. it with other characters and whatnot. And I came across really? one where he combined the Mortal Kombat with, with Street Fighter. You know, took me straight back to my childhood. And I'm like, yeah, I always I, I like Street Fighter, but I was more of a Mortal Kombat guy than a Street Fighter guy if I had to choose. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I just was watching and I was thinking to myself, man, the Street Fighter characters in a in a gang battle couldn't beat the Mortal Kombat crew, man. They 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 couldn't have, they wouldn't have had no smoke for the Mortal Kombat crew. Uh, I gotta agree with you on that. I gotta agree with you on that. Only because maybe the way the, the characters were uh structured, they had more capabilities. More capabilities on the Mortal Kombat side, and the uh, Street Fighter side seem more of a traditional type of thing, a traditional martial art type of thing, you know, where it wasn't as much funky stuff. You know, you have my guy who can who can who can stretch the arms, and you had yeah. Chung Lee with the will of fast kicks, but still on the traditional side. Yeah, now, Mortal Kombat had a little bit more tricks in the bag, man. I agree, but now don't get me wrong. That's some matchups that Street Fighter could have won over Mortal Kombat. Who you got? He was going to whoop Sonya Blade. <laughs> Sonya Blade ain't want no smoke with the <laughs> She wouldn't Lee. smoke. None, bro. None. You know what I'm saying? That if she got her with that little leg grip, you know what I'm saying? That, that would have worked like once. Mm -hmm. Then it wouldn't have worked no more after that. Like, you Chung Lee would have got busy. Whoo, she would have got busy. <laughs> she would have got busy. I don't know that Liu Kang, Liu Kang and, and Ryu and uh, Ken would have been some good good matchups too, man. You know yeah, what yeah, 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 yeah. Neck and neck, neck and neck. Neck and neck. I, I don't know. Who you got? Sub-Zero. But Sub-Zero, he going to Sub-Zero going to give anybody the business though. Anybody. Who going to touch him? Anybody Who going to touch him? That's, 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 that's your ace card right there. Uh, And Scorpion too. Scorpion too. Blanca, he he like that inside work. He grab on you and rah, 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 gnaw on you. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> Scorpion is just stand on the outside and you know what I'm saying. Get over here, snatch him up, bring him to me. You know what snatch I'm saying? Him up. Put that work in, push him back out. You know what I'm saying? Back to the outside. And then, not to mention, he had that little uh, that little teleport from one end of the screen to the other side with that yeah. that punch. He'd have been behind him before he knew it. You know, what see, I'm saying? And, that, and and that that's the difference between the Street Fighter and and the um Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat had a more of a mythological mystique to him than Street Fighter did. You know, Street Fighter they had their you know they got their traditional one two punch little fast hands. The the e Honda he get he get busy too. You know what I'm saying? He gonna slap you up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He slap you up real quick. But that's about it. E Some other them hands, don't, bro. Don't let him get on, you know what I'm saying? Get a hand on you. Get a hand on you, it's over. He, he heavy handed. He gonna he lay it on you. He had them hands, bro. He had them hands. <laughs> what was the uh, the brother name on uh, uh, Street Fighter? Who? The, the boxer. Oh, man. I can't even remember. That's sad. Him and Jax would have been a good matchup. You know what I'm saying? 
from from part two. Him and Jax, they 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 went head up. Now I gotta look it up. Come on, we gotta do our black folk right. Bell Grot, Bell Grot, Bell 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 Rock or something like that. Bell Rock, Rock Street. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Him and Jax would have met up pretty good, man. Jax with the metal arms, you know what I'm saying? But Jax kind of sucks. I think he'd have lost. <laughs> oh man. So what so since we're talking about that, man, let's talk about the movie though. How you feel about the movies? The movie ad- adaptation of either or. Yes. Yeah. Even the newer one for the Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat had the better movies. But but I, mm. I, I, I kind of dug the Street Fighter a little bit, but I ain't watched it in years. You know what I'm saying? I'm just kind of going off my time. memory as a kid. You know what I'm saying? Like how I felt about it. It wasn't as yeah. good as the Mortal Kombat. How did it resonate with you back in the day? Which one? Both of them. You're saying, like, how did it hit you? As a kid coming up, being a as fan, a, like, how did it? As a kid, Mortal Kombat 1 hit me. You know what I'm saying? Mortal Kombat mm-hmm. 2 sucked. But Mortal Kombat 1 hit me, you know what I'm saying? Street Fighter didn't hit me as hard, even though it had uh, an actual name. It had Jean-Claude Van Damme, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. It should have been the better movie, but something missed the, the mark on it. I might go back and look at that one, actually, man, now that you got me talking about man. it. I wish they were. <laughs> and now that we're talking about it, where are all the martial art movies at nowadays? Do we got one? We had uh, some. Boys back in the day, man. It's Ip Man. I ain't really seen her one that really And I mean, and they still come out, but they 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 fallen off too, like really. Like they still drop movies recently, but it's not like one and two. But man, where where are your um your Bruce Lees, your Chuck Norris's, where are your uh your Jet Lees, your Jackie Chan's? Well, with, with the popularity at? of mixed martial arts, it seems like they would at least have some of those out, a little more of them. But Man, you had you had kickboxer back in the day. You want to look at that stuff? You know what I'm saying? Like they they, they are. We even had we had we had the kids of three ninjas. Yeah, <laughs> come on, man. Ninja Turtles, man. Michael B. Jordan did has done the boxing movie. Uh, the Rocky, the new version of Rocky stuff. You know, they they try to bring that back. Uh, the Creed, you know what I'm saying? And there was another, they've done a few boxing movies, but they don't do the martial arts. Yeah, that, but that's, that's the boxing, but yeah, I want, we have, we have like martial, martial arts, arts though. though. Martial like, arts hit hard. I remember even my pops talking about when he was coming up, he did martial arts uh, when he was, when he was younger. And then that was the push for me to get into it. Of course, I took it to the next level. I joke with my pops all the time about it. You know, he got, he got his black belt, but he was like, it's not, it's not the same. It wasn't the same as when you got yours. It's like, yeah, I'm the real deal. I let my pops know the real deal. But, yeah. you know, that was the hype back in the day, back in the 70s for him. You know what I'm saying? You had even the black exploitation guys, you know, they were still getting in with the martial arts. You come out the movie theater, everybody wanted to try the moves. Everybody became a, a martial art expert just by sitting in the movie theaters. Yeah. Um, you got to think about it. Come black up people the 80s, of course. Or into um, boxing, really. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That was the sport. Yeah. That was. The big sport in the 60s and 70s, you know what I'm saying? Like, bigger than everything else, boxing was. Everybody wanted to be the world champ. So for martial arts movies to always be the thing that everybody loved, it said a lot, you know what I'm saying? Because we weren't necessarily all going out doing karate, but we loved, we admired it. We had a respect for the culture, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. And it dissipated at some point. Yeah, I, I think the, la- the last one holding it down is Michael Jai White. I think he's the last one left that's really... Really holding it down. Yeah. I you know? Because he do those movies, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, And, they, and, and they're, not, they're not big blockbusters, either. Yeah, you know? They're just like little straight-to-DVD type of joints. Well, no, and DVDs no more, but you know what I mean. No Straight-to-Netflix. Yeah, that, that feel. <laughs> whatever whatever that is considered <laughs> now. Straight to... Uh, well, you can't even, you can't even say straight-to-Netflix anymore. Prime. That's what you got to say. Straight-to-Amazon Prime. Some of them lower But you know what's tiers. crazy? You can't even say that anymore because you got you got you got big tier movies that's going straight to um streaming sites now. They're yeah, not, not they're yeah. not even worrying about it. But see, that's not even the issue. The going to uh, streaming is what streaming do you get to make it to? You know what I'm saying? Do you get to go to <laughs> Netflix? Do you make Netflix? It to Hulu? Do you go to HBO Max or do you go to the to Amazon Peacock. Prime or or lower? You know what I'm saying? Because it gets lower. Yeah. I got the lower ones on my. TV. I can't even remember what they call. Yeah, do you make it to Tubi or um, what's the little one? Crackle. You know what I'm saying? Are you a Crackle mm-hmm. movie? 
a cracker movie. <laughs> Hey, uh, they put out a new Tekken, man. You know, Tekken should have got a movie, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, man. Yeah. That'd have been dope. Or, check this out. Why is Killer Instinct? Why did that never get a run? Like, why did that never come into modern day gaming? Man. Instinct was that thing, bro. You throwing it. You throwing it. <laughs> it was. Why is it? It's not out. They ain't got no new versions of it. Even with the newer, like even since when? Like when? When was the last time they dropped a uh, a game? I don't think it ever made it to PlayStation. I think it ended in the Nintendo Only, era. And, and, like, wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's something they definitely should bring back then. It was a great game, Classic. bro. Like, <laughs> that was great. And, with, and, and especially it's with the way game. technology is, yeah. especially with the way technology is now versus what it, like. So Nintendo sixty four was probably like the last time it was. You know what I'm saying? Produced. Did, did it get there in 64? Was it just super? I don't know. Like, I ain't seen it since That's crazy. Though, to be honest with you. That's I, crazy. I love it going up, though. Well, yeah, show some more love to Killer Instinct. W- would make a good movie. I miss um, I miss the arcades, man. Hitting the arcades. Mm-hmm. Like, they got them still, in a sense. But, man, that was the spot to go. Oh, yeah. That was the spot to go. You know, I'm I'm ready for the VR arcades, man. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm ready. Doing for. bigger, 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 and better. Yeah. We so y'all ain't got them like that, like that yet. Right now? Yeah, we got some VR. They got. Here. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So they play at them, but they ain't they ain't where I want them at yet. You know what I'm saying? So what the level the level's not there yet. They got level up. Yeah. Like, the the, con- the, con- the concept is there, but it just needs to be improved. Yeah, it's fun, but it ain't like. It ain't like it ain't there yet. <laughs> it still got work to do, man. <laughs> it's it's cool for a here and there thing, but uh, some other games aren't as realistic. Some of them just ain't as fun. Some are funner than others. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it's got it's got a ways to go. Okay, okay. I'm talking about when the big games is all in the arcades, and we just all go there and and. Um, we we playing Killer Instinct against each other with the VR and as the characters. Yeah, you you, character. you pick your character. You you become the character. I become. You the ain't character. just on the. You, you just ain't on the sticks as as the character. You become I the character. Raise my leg to do that kick. If I'm Chung Lee, I gotta go. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> oh, oh, a lot of people in trouble. Then. <laughs> in trouble, bro. I'm in trouble. <laughs> my knees gonna be hurting after that. Shoot. That's a workout, man. It's like 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 the Wii Wii games. You know what I'm saying get interactive with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Americans so lazy, we ain't appreciate them. You know what I'm saying? But but we we tried. Yeah, they 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 wanted they wanted the video games you can control with your mind, probably. You know what I'm saying? You ain't yeah, got to do nothing. Just sit there, just I right, do this, do that. You know what I'm just think yourself through it. Yeah, nah, uh, <laughs> nah, nah. I want to do some work. <laughs> now give me some movement. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some movement, man. So I can feel like I just got my behind whooped afterwards, man. Give me a, a real adrenaline rush, like. Man, like, I remember. When I went to the VR spot, right? They, they, the dude that run it, he was like, say, he saved this one game. He was like, hey, just come over here and do this one game with me. And I'm like, what's the game? You know what I'm saying? He's like, nah, nah, you just got to do it. And uh, I can't tell you nothing. So he put me in the little set. He said, stand right here. And, and step on this little board. I'm like, all right, I step on the board. He's like, all right. So then all of a sudden he cut the game on and I'm walking this plank off the edge of a skyscraper and I'm just walking. <laughs> and it, that one was real now. That felt real. And it's like, mm-hmm. all right, as I start getting to the edge of this skyscraper, it's like, oh, Lord. He's like, oh, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> yeah, you start getting nervous for real. Like, And that lets me know that the mind really don't know the difference between a dream and reality. You know what I'm saying? That's why when you mm-hmm. dream, you get scared like somebody really after you. Yeah. Your, your subconscious don't know the difference between that stuff, man. But that's another conversation. I get to the edge. He's like, all right, you're at the edge, right? I said, yeah. He said, look down. I'm not a scared of heights kind of dude. But when you look down and you see traffic and you don't know how far up you are, it get real <laughs> for a second. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And I look and the, your, your, your mind got to click and, and, and engage. Like, hold up, this, this, this is virtual. I'm consciously telling myself this ain't real, but it's, but you know, you got that little nervousness. You know what I'm saying? So he like, all right, now look around. I'm looking around. He like, all right, 
and take a step. And, you know, you take a step off the edge and you lose your balance when you take a step off the edge. Everybody that did the game lost their balance. I tried to fight losing my balance, lost my yeah, balance. Yeah, because you knew it was coming. He grabbed me, you know. And I'm looking, like, I'm still falling. He like, nah, I got you. You're good. <laughs> I'm like, I thought I was going, bro. The plank is this high off the ground. Like, all mm-hmm. the three, two to three inches off the ground. You know what I'm saying? Like, that step yeah. felt like the longest like step he was ever. way up there. Then yeah. my wife did it after watching me and laughing. And she did the same thing. You can't control it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's, it's, all, it's all in the mental, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. And that's so, at the, uh, the VR spot? Yeah, the VR spot. So when they all get to the point where they playing mind games on you like that, I'm with that, you know. But right now, it ain't, ain't going to be for everybody because some people, I see them falling in their living rooms and stuff, man, you know, when they be playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, that's, that's what we're going, though, man. You're talking about the um, that whole VR world, the metaverse whole thing. We had that conversation before plenty of times. Oh, yeah. And bringing that virtual reality into that reality uh, realm, it's going to be crazy. And then while we're talking, while we're thinking it ain't there yet, it probably is. We just ain't got the technology like that yet over here. Yeah, yeah. It's being produced. It's being produced. No, in it's, one of the it's probably already, it's probably, it's probably already <laughs> produced. And it, like, here's a crazy thing. When I used to live in Japan, and I remember coming back to the States, and we had, you know, the um the rides where you feel like you're actually on a roller coaster type of thing. We had yeah. that way back in like the early, early nineties. <laughs> Came over here, they didn't have it, and then they started dropping them like 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 early two thousands. And people were like, yo, what is this? Like we we've been had that like ten years ago. States just now getting it. It's crazy. We already had that. Even with the small cell phones, the little miniature cell phones before the cell phones got small like they were. 95 in Japan, they was already like that. Yeah. Over in the States, they had the big black joints. You know what I'm saying? And then in, in what, maybe early 2000s, they finally started getting smaller. It's yeah. like, man, they've been had that in the early 90s in Japan. You, you so know how we're talking America is? Is that we, we always claim to be ahead on everything, too? People are like, man, yeah, the rest of the world be copying our flavor. Nah, yeah. bro, we be behind like a mug. We, we just, way behind, just way behind. That we be, but we cocky. <laughs> Arrogant. You know that's why that's why a lot of countries don't like us, man. Like, God, they think they this, they think they that. They don't even know. I'm pretty sure out in Dubai, they got so much craziness out there. You know what I'm saying? Especially with all the money that's floating around, and we think we're a rich nation. Mm. Man, they got ballers out there that they, they 14 karat gold. Ferraris for no reason. Just cause. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We 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 arrogant, man. We'll go travel out of state on vacation and talk about the foreigners in the country. Like <laughs> we in your country. No, you the foreigner. <laughs> you the foreigner. That's that's that American arrogance, bro. Like, but Man, why these people don't speak English? Because this is not an English speaking country. That's why. Right. <laughs> hey man, that's how we get down, man. That's what that arrogance is what made us great, though. You know, I guess we losing some of it now with with, with time, but it is what it is. Yeah. Um, hey, man. Speaking of, uh, you know, how we're transitioning into different times, and you talked about the, you you brought up the multiverse as being one of those things. Um, we also have talked about OnlyFans in the past, which is, you know, uh, the the way of the future. You know. So it's a wave, man. It's a wave. Hey, revisiting OnlyFans, we came across an article about a school teacher that quit being a school teacher because she made a million dollars off of OnlyFans and whatnot, man. <laughs> that that the idea of that is incredible, man. And stuff like that always makes me say, I don't know what's gonna cave first. The job market getting rid of us or us getting rid of the job market. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's it's gonna when that happens, it's it's gonna clash, it's gonna come to a head. Man, I mean, honestly, like crazy thing is this, I think about it a lot. I think about it more than I actually realize uh when whenever you um whenever you had that conversation and I was thinking about man, how I many it's like looking at the the job market, people don't people ain't gonna wanna do these jobs anymore. 
I was going to do this hard labor for? I'm going to sit in this classroom and teach these kids and make $30,000, $40,000 a year, $50,000 a year. When I can go over here and make half a million to a million, easy. And even if you don't make it, even if you don't make a million, how many people willing to say, I'm going to put this to the side because I'm going to at least try, you know, and say, I'm not even going to try to become a school teacher. I'm not going to deliver mail and be, and be a post office worker, a post postman. I'm not going to be a construction worker. I'm not going to be a plumber. I'm going to OnlyFans. Yeah. Go on YouTube. I'm going to be a TikTok guy. I'm going to dance on TikTok and make some, make some money. Just think about it. I'm not going to be an electrician. I'm not going to climb up these towers. Even if you don't get to a million, what, what's the better way to get 60000 From your home posting videos or fat going to an actual job and grinding it out? You know what I'm saying? And, and the jobs is being forced to have to pay more. My wife said she went to go pick up, she went to go to this barbecue restaurant for lunch and saw the hiring signs for $17 an hour at a restaurant. That's where we at now. You know what, <laughs> what I'm saying? $17 an hour. To, I mean, yeah, and for, it has to be. My, my son, my son, 13 years old, and he was having the conversation, and he's like, "I can't see myself working a working a regular job." And I get that everybody has that mindset at some point, but even talking to him and trying to convince him, no, you might want to have a a, a fallback. You might want to try to have a regular job at some point. He had no. He's like, "No, no, I don't see no. Why? why? It was no convincing him at 13 years old a reason why to see having a regular job." while working at Chick-fil-A or working at Foot Locker is a good move to get to get started. You know, back when we were 16, 17, we were happy to have those kind of jobs. Yeah. You know, we were looking for those kind of jobs. Hey, I go work at Family Dollar. I make this $6 an hour. I was hyped to work at Family Dollar. We talked about how I, I skipped out on the trip to Miami to work at Family Dollar. Now, nah, I'm, I'm working a gig. I'm, I ain't going on this trip to, 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 uh, to Miami. I'm going to work this job at Family Dollar. Mm-hmm. Kids growing up now, man, they don't have that kind of mindset. It's like, no, nah, why, why am I going to do that? They're seeing, for one, they're seeing too many people, you know, make this money, make $30,000, $40,000, $100,000, a million dollars on Instagram, TikTok, Snap, whatever, whatever the social sites they are that make money, Facebook. Right. What's the incentives? You got to raise the money up a little bit. You can't give somebody $12 and say, hey, yeah, this, 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 this is good enough to work at H&M. Nah, you got to give them $17, $18 to work at H&M. <laughs> you know what I mean? To work in the mall, to work at Foot Locker. Only way. This teacher at, at a uh, million dollars over the course of three years, that averages out to twenty seven, almost $28,000 a month she was making. And you got to think a teacher's salary ain't ain't leaps and bounds beyond that for the year. You know what no. I'm saying? Like no, no, <laughs> not even close. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like so, it's just something to make you consider, man. Like wow, what's the incentive? What's the incentive? And like when you when when, when you sent it to me, I'm like, you know what? That was actually smart. You know, she can go be a teacher later when she don't when she's not as marketable on OnlyFans anymore. Yeah. And she can put that on pause. Let me go ahead and make this money. If I feel like teaching later on in life, let me go ahead and teach later on in life when OnlyFans ain't popping for me no more. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I gotta find another she avenue. Is where she can't be profitable off her body or looks no more. I'm out. But I already done stacked up like five million. You know what I'm saying? So now when I go into this other thing, I got five million in the stash. I can kind of go if I even I even if I even feel like you know what I'm saying even if I ever even feel like going to be a teacher again, yeah. why? Especially if I if I did right by my money, ain't no point in me going back into the uh, the workforce, right? Bro, I sent you the uh, this link about the dude that was making two million a month off of uh, social media skits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I never even heard of the guy. You know, I'm like, wow, some dude I never even heard of. Like you've never crossed my radar at any point, and you're right. making two million dollars a month off skits online. So yeah, like, and I meant wow, to respond to that. I, exist in the world, like yeah, I, I meant to respond to that because especially as we get older and we get more disconnected from these certain sectors, just like musicians, you got so many musicians or rappers or whatever who are out there that we never heard their names, but they're popping for a certain sector. 
And even when you talked about me and, you know, how we market music, hey, look, just work on your, 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 your audience. So if you get on Facebook and you got a market on Facebook that's 2 million people who are subscribed to you, 2 million people out of the whole world, that's not a lot of people, honestly. Yeah, and that's two million people that you would never come across of, and, and, and you you would never come across of to even have the interaction to say, "Hey, do you know Snooty Whoop, whoever this guy is?" But that's still two million people that you've never met, you'll never have a conversation with that are still subscribed to this individual who's paying them out. You know what I'm saying? A musician that you've never heard of, but he has three million listeners. But that's three million people that you'll probably never come across ever in your life to even have a conversation and say, hey, do you know who Wap Dee Doo is? Who do this jazz music over here? He's dope. But he still got 3 million people that subscribe to him that's paying him every day. Yeah. Every stream. That's what's so dope about um, being able to reach large scale markets across the world. Because we're not even just talking about you know, when we're coming up in music back in the day, you was marketing your neighborhood. You was marketing your school and your community. You know, your state, maybe. You might go from city to city within your state. And that's your that, that, that's your biggest reach until you can get put on further. But, man, I got a homeboy that's, that's out um, in Denmark that I talk to from time to time who enjoys what I do. Like, man, this is dope. I want to collab with this, this and that. I would have never met this guy if social media wasn't a thing. And these ways of putting your stuff out wasn't so vast to where you can reach so many people across the world. It's, 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 it's crazy. It's, it's incredible, man. It's incredible. And it's great opportunities for people, man. You, you look at, um, you look at the idea that these people can do these things, like even with the only fans, right? You don't even have to have mm-hmm. your face out there, but you have the opportunity to make this level of money without having your face out there. You right. have on YouTube or Facebook or wherever these people are doing their skits, TikTok, wherever, you you can take a a few months of a run and before you know it, you're partnering with big companies and you're doing collabs with celebrities and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And now you've transitioned from one thing as a skit maker into movies and all these other things because regular people are now taking these opportunities, that fame notoriety, and transitioning it into actual careers. Outside right. of just social media, like I looked at, um, we went to we went out to eat restaurant at this we went out to eat last night at this pizzeria, and they had uh, wrestling on WWF WWE, and mm-hmm. I'm looking up there, and one of the Paul brothers was up there, and apparently he's like a character on the show now. I didn't know he was a wrestler, and I thought <laughs> to myself, wow, this dude went from being a YouTube dude to fighting Floyd Mayweather to being a professional wrestler. He just did whatever he wanted because he was famous. And it's like, Mm -hmm. I remember it seemed like being a wrestler would have been a hard thing to do once upon a time. Like you had to go to school for it, you had to train, then you had to go through all the little unknown places that you work your way up, and then you work your way up (laughs) from the unknown places, and then you get to the big leagues if you actually make it. Like, you know what I'm saying? But like, yeah. yeah, this dude is just, hey, man, you famous? Come on. Uh, Ronda Rousey, you, you want to do this? Come on and come do it, too. Like, you know, but here's like, the thing. Here's the thing. That's smart business. That's business, too. I just ain't like the, the, the beautiful thing with that is the business aspect of it. It's like, OK, I know this guy has his own audience and that's how they market it. Hey, look, I'm bringing an audience to you. I got five million followers on Instagram. That's 5 million people who subscribe to me. So you put me on your program. You make me a WWE wrestler. Guess what? That's at least half of those people that's going to make, they, they're going to want to tune in just to see me. And now every time I post something about me wrestling on, on, on your network, that's more eyes. Like that's, that's, that's the great thing I heard Kevin Hart talking about it. Like you are really owning your marketing, your, your, your uh, marketing ability. Like your profile becomes you and whatever it is that you built around you. So wherever I go, those eyes that are on me, that five million, whatever I post, whether it's a, a Chick-fil-A or if it's a bottle of bamboo or it's me wrestling on it on WWE, that's five million people who are gonna be exposed five more five million people who will be exposed who might not have been aware or interested, now interested in, into your uh entity. 
because you brought me on board. Right. So they're looking at it. It's, it's, it's a win-win from both sides. A win-win for that individual who I don't have to go through these loops and bounds and be this unknown person, go make a name for myself and become The Rock or become John Cena. I am who I am. You bring me on. I'm good to go. I'm good to go. You good to go. It, it, it all comes down to uh, companies not wanting to have to build anymore. Because what right, you just said applies right. to the music industry also. Music industry too, yep. Hey, yep. man, I'll, I'll find a little dope writer to write you a song and make you a hot beat. You know what I'm saying? You just take your fame yeah. and we'll make you hot, Cardi B. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying yeah. that Cardi, maybe she, maybe she writes her own stuff. I don't know. But you could take a Cardi and if they got enough personality and enough musical talent to get by, we'll, we'll get you to write songs. You know what I'm saying? And get you out there. Yeah. You know? and, yeah. And, and Sorry, Cardi might be a bad example because I think she did her stuff from the ground, even though she took her fame and did it. But I think she, I think she did from the ground. But I think when she got to a certain point, she hit a certain level where the industry swooped her in and put her part of a machine. Yeah, I like think she, she did I think her she was trajectory. The, she was famous. And then already. she got sucked into a machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she was, she was famous. She was famous based off of her social content. She was famous based off of her. Um, uh, uh, appearances and m- being VH1 and all that stuff, and you know, building her her own core fan base prior to yeah. getting sucked into the music machine. Yeah, and then no, the music machine, like okay, yeah. her as as an artist is what I'm saying. I I, I think right, she, right, right. She 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 right did build a little bit on her own prior to musically. Yeah, I don't think somebody yeah, just musically. said take these five hot songs and we're gonna blow you up. I think she. You know, she had a little fame, some social media stuff. She did some music, and the music called Buzz I we, is what I think. I think I think it was a mix of both. I it want to say to be, it was a mix obviously, of both. but I, but I I just don't yeah. want to not acknowledge the fact that I'm pretty sure she put in some <laughs> musical work. You know <laughs> got to give a little respect for the work, though. Yeah, give I a do, little respect I, for the work because I think I she did you. it, and I want to acknowledge that. You know what I'm saying? Because I think mm-hmm. she did. Some people may not like uh, "Catch Me Outside," girl. I don't think she did, but. That Cardi did. But Cardi was the bigger example, so I went with her. But uh, yeah, man. Let's 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 get into these cigars a little bit, man. We, you know, I don't want to get too far uh far off from them because you know we're running out of show. So I do want to give a little <laughs> part away from you. Make, make make sure we keep the stars going, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, look, man. I'm a, I'm gonna talk about my San Andreas real quick. Um, it's burning. Beautiful burn. Beautiful burn, man. Like my ash is good. It's it's a it's a beautiful ash. Um, and that speaks to the structure of the cigar. So Romeo, um, I'm not I'm gonna say that I'm gonna be honest and say I'm not too familiar with all the ins and out of Romeo, even though they were my first, my flagship um cigar, my uh, first experience and my first welcome into the cigar uh culture. I don't know much about them, and I feel bad that I don't know much about them. But what this is showing me today off this smoke is it, it's showing me that they construct their cigars very well. Um, whatever binders and fillers they use is high quality, it seems like. Um, I've gotten a lot of good complexities over the last couple of puffs um, as we're having our conversation. And you notice know, a little bit of pepper came, came in after the um, first initial puffs. A little bit, just a little bit. But then kind of infused well with um, the chocolate I had got off the, off the beginning, the oak that I had got off the beginning. And those like kind of really meshed together and gave me something dynamic. So at first I was picking them out um, individually. And then it seems like as I got done with the first third, it kind of like fused together. Like it's like one hit me. Okay, I'm, I'm, I can pick this apart. I can pick this apart. Okay, now the pepper's coming in. I can pick this apart. And then as I'm finishing up the uh, the first third, it seemed like it's all coming together now. And that kind of speaks to that 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 um, quality of the construction of the cigar. That's where I'm at with it right now. Okay. Great cigar then. Sound, was, I'm going to say sounds like a good cigar. I'm For enjoying me, the cigar. Um, I like it. I, I'm picking up on woodiness. I'm picking up on some uh, the spiciness. Definitely uh, subsided a lot. It, at this point, it's, it's kind of like a... Sp- Sweet spiciness to it, you know what I'm saying? Okay. But all of Good that like black that. pepper that I felt on the beginning kind of came down. Uh, a little leather, but not not uh, not Gurkha leather, you know what I'm saying? Just <laughs> a wee bit of leather, you know what I'm saying? And, and some woodiness yeah. mixed with that. Uh, not a bad cigar. It's nice, uh, medium, 
medium body smoke. You know what I'm saying? Is what I would say so far. So that, that's where I'm at with it. All right, cool, cool. Drew Estate going with it. Yeah. Doing a doing yeah. a great job on that cigar there, it sounds like. So uh like when you when you can handle work real quick before you go into what everybody where you're about to go. But if you can handle those two things, pepper and leather, and you can still wear it well, you you're doing something good. You're really doing something good. So I just want to put note to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, now the pepper was strong. Now don't get me wrong. That pepper <laughs> hit hard when it came in, but it it it, it died out. And then, like yeah. I say, the leather came in towards right around right now in that part of the cigar that I'm at. But it's mm -hmm. it's very subtle. It's subtle. They didn't go hard nice. on the leather. Nice. Okay. But uh, back into the music conversation, man. You know, but we're gonna mm -hmm. switch gears a little bit on the music topic. So they have released a top 50 worst rappers list that's been making a little mm -hmm. bit of noise online. So I wanted Ooh. to see if we can go over it and have a little bit of a conversation on it. You know, I'm not going to sit back and name all 50 of them. All 50? Have to, yeah, I'm not going to. Y'all going to have to look it up. Well, let's talk about what, sti what, what sticks out to you. Yeah, like what, what, what's your standout? Yeah, we can do that. We'll go into the standouts. Um, let's do this. I'll do the top 10. Okay. We'll name the top 10. At number one, they got Silk the Shocker. Number two, Lil Yachty. Number three, Master P. Number four, OJ the Juice Man. Number five, Lil Flip. Number six, Lil Pump. Number seven, Smoke Perp. Number eight, Six Nine. Number nine, Gutter Gutter. Number 10, Sean Diddy Combs. And... <laughs> A few honorable mentions. Number 11, Waka Flocka. Number 12, Koi Ray, And 13 is Birdman. Uh, 14, well, Vanilla Ice. So, Vanilla Ice. Well, let hey, me, let you me know start with really this funny. One. You know what's funny, though? So what's they got uh, Koi Ray at number 12. And guess who number 17 is? Oh. Her father, Benzino. Ain't that some, ooh, that's some mess? <laughs> it, it runs in the family. <laughs> Runs in the family. <laughs> it runs in the family. Hey, uh, man, but look. I'm going to start off with this. Before. I, I think number one and number three, I, I don't agree with them being at that spot. I, if you want to put Silver mm -hmm. Shock on the list, fine. But I don't think he's the worst rapper of all time. That's unfair. How dare you I think have it's little, little B? Maybe not, maybe not, maybe not one. Shocker. Yeah, yeah. Maybe not number one, but he is definitely top 15. I don't think I say top, top 15. 15. You can put him He's in the top, top 15. 50, but I don't think top 15. So, you wanna... Okay, okay, so look, let's do this. If we're going to talk about it, are we going to judge people on the totality of hip-hop, who's the worst, or are we going to judge you on how bad you were in your era? Because that's the difference. <sighs> um, I think we should do the, t the totality of hip-hop. Still can't, um, still let's can't not just top fifteen if we doing the totality of hip hop. Now, if you want to talk about his era, yeah, that's think, one thing. Yeah, I think it's only fair. I think it's only fair that you consider the whole totality of hip hop. Because uh, if you go era era base, you can pull some guys from the eighties who are deemed some of the throw biz some of the best of all time. Because, but you have to go back to the eighties and say what he was doing was unique and dope at that time. But then you fast forward after the evolution of music, after the evolution of hip hop, and right. then the bars get more complex. You right. know, you got to weigh it against that. But um, I still think I still think so. He's still top fifteen. Hmm. Look, this is the thing. <laughs> this will still get a bad rap. I'm gonna defend this, right? I'm gonna defend Silk because I've defended Silk to you before. Silk is. This is why Silk the Shock is getting a bad rap with, with having him the number one worst rapper of all time. Because in the in in his era, he was not viewed as the worst rapper during his era. Now there are a lot of people that didn't feel him, but there were there are a lot of people that felt him too, though, man. I can say that. No, no, I agree. And you know what? And I'm not think saying it was necessarily him. I think it was the whole movement of No Limit. It wasn't necessarily just. Because of who he was, if he didn't have no limit behind him, and that machine, and that um, that 
aura of maybe, what No Limit was. I, I get what he was going. standing on by himself, and he was Silk the Shocker by himself, not Master P's brother and a, a, a artist on the No Limit. I don't think he would have got the respect that he did being Master P's brother, and also thinking that Master P shouldn't be number three. He should come back down. He, he shouldn't be that high. He shouldn't be number no. three. Don't even put P on the list, bro. Yeah, I mean, He's I wasn't even a fan of P back in the day, album. but I, I don't think he should be. Yeah, I don't think he should be there. I don't think he's definitely not number three. No, and and he don't. He never no, no claim to be no rapper like that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. even with that, he ain't nah, bro. Like you got to put nah, some yeah, yeah. respect on P to that, bro. P is you got P over ba- you got Baby Birdman is a better rapper than P. Come on now, Get come on, now. yeah, here, yeah, bro. Like I agree with you. I agree with you on that. And this is coming from somebody who wasn't a big fan of Master P. I wasn't a huge Master P fan at all. Not even, not even a little bit. I respected him, but wasn't a fan of, of you know, what I'm saying his music like that. I respected the music, understood what he was doing, but it wasn't wasn't what I was riding to. All right, how about this then? You got the list in front of you. Hmm. Who's number forty seven on that list, and how you feel about it? <laughs> Come on, man. Hey, look. No, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um. Riz is number 47. And in all actuality, coming from somebody who enjoys bars and flow and personality and how all of that comes together, I agree with it. See, I'm gonna say in the totality. I'm not a big fan. RZA I'm not a big fan of Rizza's rapper. I'm gonna say on the totality of hip hop, Rizza don't make this list. But you can you can probably find but, fifty rappers who are worse than him. You can't. But if we're gonna put Rizzo on the list, I like him there. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If, if and and that's where I'm at with it. I like him there. That's where I'm at with it. So like same thing that you said. So if you said who's top fifty, or would you put Rizzo in the top fifty worst rappers of all time? I would have never considered put him putting him in the top fifty. But if you are going to add him to a top fifty, just out of fairness of style era. Uh, region, culture, whatever, and you had to put a New York rapper from the 90s in the top 50, like, if you if, if you say, okay, I need five people from the 80s, I need five people from the South, I need five people from New York in the 90s, I need five people from the 90s on the West Coast, and I have to get certain people in just to make it seem well-rounded and fair, Yeah, I give it, I give it to them. But can you find 50... Overall, rappers who are worse than RZA, yeah. But if I just had to fill a quota, you got to put them in there. And you got to put them right there. So, and they like the same uh, thing with Gucci Man. Like Gucci Man being 40. And I'm not a Gucci Man fan, but I don't even think he should be 40, honestly. Gucci shouldn't be 40, bro. Like, Gucci has had some weak moments, but... Mm-hmm. Gucci's had some Overall. really good moments too. It like Overall you got to it's yeah. a balance, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, overall career wise, it's like it's like putting 2 chains in there and 2 chains that had some whack bars. He had some extremely horrible bars in time. Is he in there? But overall, I don't think he's in there. But overall, would you ever put him in there? No. No. But has he had some weak moments? He's had some moments that I'm sitting there like, dude, um, y'all actually put this on a record and put this out? Yeah. And this is on the radio? Had some terrible moments. What? But but 2 Chainz has what? some moments where he go, too. Like, let's, it's not, yeah. like, look at him yeah. like, you and know. Same, and the same, and same with Gucci. Yeah. Same with Gucci. Gucci has some terrible moments, some highly terrible moments. But he has some dope yeah. moments, too. I got to give him that. Yeah. Right. That's where I'm at with Gucci. Don't put Gucci. Gucci. He's on. He's on. He's nah. on the same conversation with Chingy. No, you don't. You don't put him in the same conversation with Chingy. That's disrespectful. No, nah, you don't. You don't. They put the whole Saint Lunatics up there <laughs> at 28. Uh, hey, but when it comes down to it, the worst, the worst, the worst rap diss of all time. Them Saint Lunatics. Just based off of that diss that they had to, um, to who was it to? Oh. The Serpent in Peace, right? Yeah, just off just off of that off of that freestyle or whatever it was. Yeah, you deserve to be uh, top fifty worse. Just off of that one. Yeah, see, they got them up there. Uh, they got C Murder up there, which lets me know you just didn't like none of T. True, you didn't like Tru at all. Like you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> you didn't like the whole yeah. group up there. Like, um, 
Nick Cannon's at 26. I, I think Nick can rap, but, you know, I can't. It's I the totality. It's, it's the totality. You know what I'm it's, saying? It's, like, it's, 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 it's the career. It's the career. Yeah. They're looking at the whole totality. Yeah. You know, he, he don't, he, he, I can't defend him as much as I think. No, you he, can't. He, he can rap, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, how you feel about Nelly Cardi being in B there? is number 20. I don't think Cardi B should be on this list. I, I disagree. Yeah, I, I disagree. I disagree with that, too. Cardi's not I don't, a bad I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of her. She's not a bad rapper. She can deliver. Like, I don't know, like, to what degree she work, writes home rhymes like we talked about. But does she have a delivery? Can she flow with it? Yeah. I give it to her. Like, if you have the name of some of the female rappers who are popping right now, including Cardi and Meg, Megan Thee Stallion, She's she, she's one of the better ones. She's been one of the better ones out Let's there right be now. Be honest, man. Cardi's gonna go down as one of the best female rappers of all time. Why would you put her on this list? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because what she represents for her era. You know what I'm saying? Am I gonna sit here and put her up against mm -hmm. MC Light? No, I'm not gonna have her run run it with no. MC Light. You know what I'm saying? But she's one of the best. Like let's let's be honest. You know what I'm saying? She yeah. may not. Yeah, be she, she represents. She may not be. Like she may she not represents be her era very well. She represents her so. era very well. She does. Like you, you hear the, you 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 hear the city girls, city girls, Cardi B, come on. Um, who's the Glorilla that's out? Glorilla Cardi, come on. Like if you write if you weigh her against her era, she's head and shoulders above most. She is. I, I've never really heard a, a bad verse from her. Well, I said that's a bad verse. Mm -hmm. Like. I may not have heard yeah, like, loud about yeah. all her stuff, but I ain't never heard one. I was like, Ugh, yeah. get that out of here, Cardi. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and, right, 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 right. I agree with that. And you I can I can say I can say that about most people. I've heard bad Jay-Z verses. So, you know what I'm saying? For me to say I ain't heard a, a bad Cardi verse is a compliment to her. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. How do you feel about French Montana being on there? I don't think French uh, is bad. French ain't bad. French French ain't great. French ain't never shined as great. Mm -hmm. French is middle of the pack. That don't get you on the worst of all time list, though. You know what I'm saying? Just being and I mentioned, uh, I'm totally mediocre. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I mentioned this to you, how much I disagree to this one, though. And a lot of people might not know how dope this guy actually was, but P.D. Paolo being on the list at 39, man, I think is a disjustice to him. Gotta get, yeah, gotta get Petey Pop a little bit more respect, man. You looking at him as a two-hit wonder and putting him on the list mm -hmm. for his career. But yeah. that ain't got nothing to do with how he got down on, on the microphone. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta listen to the album. You gotta listen to the album. You gotta listen to his like his actual work. You can't just like, okay, he had Freak a Leak in North Carolina joint. You know what I mean? Yeah. You actually gotta listen to him. Like yeah. he don't deserve to be on the list. Yeah. Don't don't judge him by his singles. That that okay, we're in an era now where the fans pick your single and it can be anything. Mm -hmm. PD Pablo's yeah. from an era where you had to go make a club song. And, had and to. that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like that don't mean that's who you were. When people bought your album, your single wasn't always indicative of what they were gonna get. That from that time. Truth. Man, you said a word right there. Like what's crazy now and what I hate when I listen to music now, um, especially with these newer artists, it sounds like a lot of these songs that they put on their albums sounds like it's meant to be a single. You know, I missed the era of you had two or three singles that didn't sound much of anything like the album. The album was a body of work that sounded like a body of work. And then you had two or three songs that kind of stood out that sound a little bit different from the rest because they went in the studio with the saying, man, we nah, we need a radio joint. The, the record label come to and say, all right, this, the album was good, but I need something for the radio. Now it sounds like they need like everybody's making something for the TikTok or some area they're making something for the for the for the quick pop or or or, or the stream or, or for the or for the radio. And it's like the whole body of work sounds like that. Like everything sounds like it's meant to be a single. Yeah. And missing the essence of what it meant to make a full body of work. Everything is not meant to sound like a single. Yeah. You know, you need to have those singles that sound separate from the rest because they're meant to be a single to draw your attention to me as an artist. And then now let's get into the depth depth of the artist. Right. We're missing a lot of that. And that's what P.D. Pablo was. I, I miss that also. I, I do miss that. I, I, I want the album to sound one way with 
two or three highlight highlighting moments. Mm-hmm. It may sound different, but I knew what you yeah. were doing with those two or three yeah. moments. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, Ra- Ross started doing that very well at one point. Ross did that very well at one point. Teflon Don, when he did that. And, yeah, and people, man, that, that's and people what, judge him on the singles, and that's why people don't think Ross that's is as great as he is. Go back and that's listen where to I the was. albums. That dude is dope. Like, that's know? where I was. That's, that's where I was. I wasn't a big fan of Ross, and then I became the hugest fan of Ross. Um, because I was judging them on the singles, like, ah, right, that's cool. But then when I got into deeper than rap and actually started listening to the album, Teflon Don started listening to the album, like, yo, this is, this is, this is it. Like he, he, he going in because he came from that fabric of let me put this out for the radio. Let me put this out for the street. Let me put this out for the, for, for the mixtape vibe, but this is my album, you know? And then now fast forward. He's not doing much of anything for the uh for the singles and for the radio. Now he's just doing album joints. So where you you gotta listen to the album now. Yeah. You know, less singles, more album meat. And now he's not getting the respect on that end because he's making album meat right. and not TikTok dances. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, please. <laughs> this ain't something you can TikTok to. <laughs> yeah. Now but he's like, that like cloth. He ain't what he is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, but <laughs> and he still I'm, go. I'm giving you nothing but heat now. Like you know. It's, <laughs> Yeah, and look at Ross when he had his battle, his verses. He plays Santorini, Greece. You know what I'm saying? Just if that ain't an Come idea, let you know what kind of cloth this guy is. Exactly. Like my my uh, Santorini, Greece is not a, it's not a no way. Yeah, that's, not, that's, not, that's, that's not a radio single, but that joint is that joint. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh. yeah, so that that takes Petey off the list for me, man. I, I'll say. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't like uh, I don't like my dog Pitbull on this list. They got Pitbull <laughs> yeah. on this list tied with Flo Rida at thirty seven. I know yeah, why you yeah, put him I, up there. I don't like him up there. You know. See, and but the thing is, they they don't understand him. Like same thing with Flo Rida. Flo Rida honestly shouldn't be on the list either, because those are two artists. They 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 did it similar but different. They, they understood their market. Pop. In, in they the understood movie. their market. They said, this is where I'm going to last forever in pop music. And this is where I'm always going to be able to cash in a check. Because I'm flow writer. Okay, I can probably do this. But if I do this, this is going to be residual for the rest of my life. Yeah, Everybody's going to play this at some point. Or I'm going to be able to perform this song forever to any market. Same thing with Pitbull. And Pitbull did it. He understood his market. He's like, yo, I could do this. I, I can continue to do this forever. But there's something else that's untapped. Let me tap into that. And then let me do it well. And he kills it. Yeah. Kills it. Kills it more than Flow Rider, in my opinion. Way, more, way more than Flow Rider. But he First kills all, it. Why would you package them together? That lets me know you just look at them <laughs> as the same type of dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's not. It's not. Yeah, man. Uh, anybody else on this list that stands out to you, man? You know, I I want to comment on Future being in here at forty four. Mm. It's like I I want him there, kind of, and same, I don't want him there at the same time. I, I'm torn on the Future thing. Like I understand why you for the same it. reason with RZA. For the but same reason like, with RZA. Yeah, yeah. Future is not a. He okay. never. He's a club boy. He never came off as a rapper to me. Yeah, he he's never came up as a like, rapper, yeah. rapper to me. Yeah, he's, he, he like, don't care about that stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? He's like, someone who makes, to me, he's someone who makes songs. He's, he's not a someone who. John Rainey, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wouldn't even, put, I wouldn't even call him a rap artist. I don't know how he feels and how he considers himself, but honestly, I wouldn't, call, I wouldn't consider him a rapper. He's not traditional rap at all, man. It, it feels unfair mm-hmm. to even categorize him into that. Like, you know what I'm saying? And and yeah, I'm not even a yeah. future fan like that. But I, I'm uncomfortable with him being there. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He make he makes songs in a, for for a hip hop genre, but his approach is different, and it's not. He's not coming at you with the intention of giving you bars. That's never been his. That's never been his aim. It's never been his aim. He just made good then, songs. Not a good song writer. Songs. Even. He just made good songs though. <laughs> like they, yeah. He made he made he makes songs. He's one of those who understands his purpose, but it's just more hip hop driven than Flo Rida. And so you could put him in the same sense and mix him in with the RZA type of idea. Okay, if you got to put a certain number of people from the South 
uh, from this gen- genre or whatever. Hey, let's go with Future. Right? We got to we got to pull somebody from this er- area. Yeah. Let's go ahead and grab Future. Come on in. But then, not for the same reason of Pitbull and, Fl- and, and Flow Rider. He understood his market. Okay, this is what they like hearing me do. I'm going to do that, and it's going to go. Yeah. Okay, I don't, I don't got to try to give you bars like J. Cole, and it's not going to come off like Benzino. You know, it's different. It's almost like put, putting Future on this top 50s worst list is almost like putting T-Pain on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah, he did a lot of hip hop driven music, but he was singing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or, or like, putting him on, or, or putting him on the top fifty worst R and B singers. Yeah, you're like really, like really going. No, no, we, we, we're, we're not, we're not, we're not expecting, we're not expecting T Pain to be Keith Sweat. Yeah, nobody's expecting him to to go and be. Um, you know what I'm saying? Go stand on the versus stage with with, with the crew with Brian McKnight. We're not expecting T Pain to be Brian McKnight. Right. That's not what we're that's not what we're looking at for T Pain to do. He's gonna come in and, and buy you a drink. Yeah. That's what he's but, here for. And fall he in love with a stripper. But he ain't Millie Vanilla either. You know what I'm saying? Like right. we he, can he got the talent. notion that he can't sing. Like he the man can sing. You know what I'm saying? Like he can sing, yeah. Yeah. It's just his approach, his 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 avenue of reaching his audience musically is just different. So you can't put him in that R and B and say, well, you're not doing what Brian McKnight. You ain't hitting all these runs and uh, all it's that not stuff. He, so we he, can't. It's all based yeah. in music, even the even the serious stuff. And I I've been more of a T Pain fan than you probably. So you may not mm-hmm. know this, but T Pain always has a song on his album without auto tune. He's been really? showing okay. that he's okay. been for a long time. Like you know what I'm saying? Like the, yeah, the man it's just that people aren't paying attention to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he can hold a pitch, he can hold the correct notes, he can hit a run. Like you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He just ain't gonna be making no ballads at the end of the day. Like you know what I'm saying? He ain't that right. type of singer. Like, and he and he probably and he probably could, but it's just not gonna come off like you know what I'm saying. Your greatest R and B crooner of all time. He ain't Marvin Gaye. Yeah, you know what I mean. Now speaking of RZA, having the same way we, the same argument we made for RZA, I feel like the same argument could be deserving of number twenty-five on this list. I don't know who's that? Manny Fresh. Oh, there we go. Okay, I opened up all the way. Manny Fresh. Manny Fresh is not a rapper. He's not a rapper. He's a music producer. RZA was producer. A, a music producer. Yes, he did a lot of rap. Manny That's Fresh like did his share of rapping, but he's not a rapper. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't even think about that for RZA, too. I didn't even think about that for RZA, too. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's like throwing Timbaland up here and saying, Timbaland, you're on the top 50 list of worst rappers. But yeah, he's not be the same rapper. thing. Like, really, you going to put Timbo on the worst list of rappers? Not. Nah, yeah, he can't rap, but still. like, Yeah, he raps. He, he's, he's rapped on songs, Timbaland and Magoo and all that stuff. But yeah. he's not a rapper. So why put Manny Fresh on there as a rapper? Doesn't make sense. Yeah, you gotta take, you gotta Puff take that. Puff can off. stay up there. Puff can stay up there as a rapper. Uh, kind of, sort of. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, no, because he did he go made, into an too much money off of. It. True, true. He, he just and had too much of. A and he he got at least five albums. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. He's 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 done he's done more rapping than than the, the rest, rest of them. Yeah. Even even more so than RZA, honestly. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I, RZA got nine to 11 members that he might rap with and he might have a little bar or verse here and there on a couple of songs. Yeah. Well, actually, he, he's had albums. He's had albums. Bobby Digital, which he probably shouldn't have done. But that's a yeah. conversation for a, 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 another uh, sector of individuals. <laughs> but I can understand why the album <laughs> came out. They were having a run. And that's what you do. Mm-hmm. That's why Master P had albums out. They were having a run. And, and I'm the face of the brand. You know what I'm saying? And so it's, I gotta be there. You, you you gotta see something from me. Yeah. The same thing. Same around. thing for same thing for Diddy. Same thing for Diddy. You know what I'm saying? Bad boy coming. All right, let me hold down my end of the uh, uh, other weight. And even when That's he did it was more thing. of uh, com- Diddy, compilation Diddy, ideas though. Diddy wanted that. It ain't because Diddy was from that. Diddy was a businessman who wanted to be a star. Mm-hmm. Drizza was a musician. Manny Fresh was a musician. You know what I'm saying? A lot of Manny's being on the track was the same way the Timbo's on the track. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just mm-hmm. kind of 
fitting in while me and while we grooving and we doing stuff and I put my catch, voice we catch, on we it. catch the vibe. I, I might as well, yeah, might as well put my, vo- my, my voice on it and, and yeah, do a little something for you. Why was Puffy on so many records when you an exec? It's like Suge Knight all being on the videos. You know what I'm saying? He didn't, all on the records. He claimed to be a producer, <laughs> but you ain't a producer like J- Jermaine Dupri. I know y'all want to have the JD and, and Diddy battle, but Diddy ain't JD. Diddy ain't, ain't JD. Not even close. You know no, 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 no. How do you feel about that? Why, why, why we're there? How do you feel about that? Diddy going up against a JD? Honestly, I think that's more. You, you go ahead. You go ahead. Diddy would. <laughs> Okay, Diddy can win that battle, but it's a battle that shouldn't occur because he ain't producing like JD produced. Mm-hmm. Diddy ain't in there banging on an MPC back in the day. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, so I'm 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 gonna I'm speak for JD. I think it's more of a slap in the face to JD for him to battle against Diddy. I think it's a slap in the face. Now, if we want to talk about records and being the 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 individual behind the force behind the records and the record label. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, but when we're talking about a producer's producer, a writer's writer, a beat maker's beat maker, right? JD and P Diddy, they're not in the same class. That's a slap in the face to the man JD. No, not you know. Class. You put you put not JD up class. against for real. You don't put him up against Diddy. You know what I'm saying? In a sense, in a sense. I, well, I'm, 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 I'm oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. In the sense, they both did. They share hip hop. They did. They share R and B. They both talked yeah. on the records and did hooks on the records and whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 not it's not it's not, it's not, it's not as much of an insult or not an insult at all if you say right. JD for real. Yeah. But to me, JD, hey JD, you go up against Diddy. Diddy want to see you. And that's uh, nah, man. That's, that's that's if I was JD, I would be offended. I would yeah. be highly offended. If I, if I was Dre, I'd be offended. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you put Diddy so against Suge. That's who you put him against. <laughs> I, I was going to I was going to ask. So is Suge the only person that, that that Diddy can go up against? Somebody who's yeah. not really that in the in the in, in in their music realm, but then represents their music. Is that really the only big guy we got that's out there? And Suge's not even doesn't even hold a candle when you come when it comes down to it. Yeah, I mean that's the only way I see it. You know what I'm saying? We we want we want to put Diddy up against all these people because he represents a certain group of music that came out from an era. But I look at him as an exec. Mm-hmm. His 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 product yeah. his him as a producer is overstated. But he is a yeah, producer. He He's a producer. Yeah, but more like yeah. an executive producer than a. I'm in the studio. Hey man, hey. So you got to this drum pattern on his man. Talent. Say what? Diddy Khaled? Kinda. Kinda. Kinda, but even then, I don't know. I, I'd have to know how, how involved Khaled is. You know what I'm saying? I know Khaled used to make beats back in the day, but th- when I seen him mm-hmm. recently, he was kind of trash. But I don't know. <laughs> like Maybe. It would just depend on how involved Khaled is in the actual... Which I would imagine he's very involved. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can think, imagine I think he's standing involved. over my shoulder annoying me. Nah, nah, nah. Change the drum pattern. It's like, well, what do you want? I don't know, but yeah. I just need I think, see, I think, need to move like this. And it's like, come on, Khaled. <laughs> like, calm down, calm down, calm down. I don't know drums to move like this. Like, I need some. <laughs> so I don't know. I, like, I can see, I can see, I can see, I can see a correlation. I can probably say Diddy and Khaled. I think they would have the similar function. When they get on the records, only thing is, Khaled don't rap on, on any records. Diddy, Diddy has. And that's the only maybe really correlation that you can say with JD and, and Diddy. Okay, JD would get on some records and rap. Diddy get on some records and rap. But JD will probably write his record, write, write his own raps, and Diddy ain't going to write his own raps. Right. So, who's really doing what? Yeah, uh, J- JD is... Let's be honest, man. JD is the more talented producer. Now, is of he the, is he the most successful of them all? Is he the most um, versatile? Arguably. Versatile uh, Arguably. in the music industry Arguably. as a, as an individual. I don't know. Maybe Diddy's the more versatile Arguably. individual because he wore more hats and of this and that. But you know what I'm saying? I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More, more that. I don't know. I think Diddy did. I mean, JD did some A and R too. Like, 
I'm sure he did to Alan an extent. Scott, like, he did. I think he got it's, his start with with a lot of that. It's, it's probably, yeah, it's probably probably closer than you think. Yeah, probably closer than you think. Around the same era, early '90s, late late '80s, probably, his probably, probably was before like before, before, uh, before Diddy. His father was before big. Diddy got an A and R. That's how he got his break, and then he started producing mm-hmm. afterwards. So maybe. Yeah, yeah. JD, give him some 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 respect, man. Give him more respect than 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 what a lot of people have given him. He deserves a whole lot more, a whole lot more. Just as you give Pharrell the respect, give Timbaland the respect. Gotta throw JD, and we and we we've done this conversation before. First episode, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back and revisit on 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 the uh, show. If you're watching this on another platform other than Spotify, we went over the top, the greatest, the Mount Rushmore of music producers in hip hop. And R and B also, and that JD mm-hmm. got his flowers in, and he deserves his flowers now, man. And not that I necessarily like JD's music over Diddy's music, you know what I'm saying? That's why I say Diddy can mm-hmm. win the battle if y'all gonna put him head up. It ain't if, if we ain't just talking about numbers, you know what I'm saying? Because he had some big mm-hmm. numbers with uh, Usher. JD had big numbers with Usher and Mariah, so right. If we yeah. gonna play the the, you got the numbers. Charts game. Diddy might lose, but if we gonna play like what make you feel something, Diddy. Will he can win that. Like he might win. He might win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It just depends on which which route you want to go. And with, with with those two guys, their catalogs are so vast. You can really go anywhere. There's so many ways you can go with it. Right, right. But uh, I don't know, brother. I think that's gonna kind of sum up the 50 worst rappers list. You know, uh, yeah. Is there anybody yeah. else on this list that you wanted to just acknowledge? You know, uh, that we didn't speak on that we didn't touch on some of these new newer rappers because. I don't know a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm India, that, 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 they got um, him at 50. You know, I, I don't think Young Boy is that great. <laughs> so, but I don't know if he deserves to be number 50 on this list. Uh, I mean, let's, let's, let's be real. There's a lot of names that I'm not really familiar with. Yeet, Kid Boo. Um, I don't know Yeet or Kid Boo. Smoker Perk. I don't, I don't know none of these people. So I can't really speak to them. I know Smoker. I don't Perk. know. Uh, and I'm, I'm just going to be on this list. Yeah, we know 6 uh, 9 Plies is on the list. I don't, you know, I don't know how I feel about Plies being on it. Maybe uh, they got Lil B, Gunna. Lil B deserved to be up there. Blueface deserved to be up there too. Yeah. Um, Chief Keef. That's almost like uh, Chief Keef is like kind of rock starry. Like you know what I'm saying? Like okay. yeah, I, I know the name. I know the name, but I don't. I don't know his work. I know the name. I don't know his work. Uh, I'm not mad well, at yeah. Soldier being up here. Big Soldier, mm, of course. Give him, give him his respect as being um, one of the worst. <laughs> <laughs> let's acknowledge it, please. Let's acknowledge it. Uh, Riff Raff deserves to be up here. They got we I didn't acknowledge about this. him. Bow Wow was up here. Realistically, <laughs> we, we, hold on. Matter of fact, we'll say this: Bow Wow and Nelly is up here also, and Easy E is up here. Do those names deserve to be up here? And we'll end on no. Uh, we'll end on those. I see Tony Ayo up here too. It's, I find that hilarious. He's up there. <laughs> uh, and I won't take them off. All right. So Nelly, Easy E, and Bow Wow. Easy E should come off because era, and he was bad in his era. Oh, though. Yeah, he was loved, but he was bad. Easy E and Silk the Shocker represent the same thing to me. Same thing. Um, then leave him on there. I guess, and, and, and he's too legendary. Huh? You, you feel uncomfortable with 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 doing that? I feel I feel uncomfortable with it, and I feel uncomfortable because era. I think that just hip hop has just gone, has done so much, and can, like same thing. Can you say can y'all find fifty rappers worse than Easy? Probably could if if, if I really sat down and and ironed it out. Who was the worst you in know, the NBA? Easy. <laughs> Easy, <laughs> but Easy didn't claim to be a rapper either. In fairness, he didn't claim to be a rapper. Yeah, yeah. that that wasn't that wasn't his thing. He he was just riding with his crew. Yeah. You know, we're gonna represent one crew. We're gonna get on some records. We're gonna talk, and I'm gonna talk to him. I'm gonna talk slick. There and that's go. what Easy did. He was just he was just somebody who just hey look, I'm gonna get on this record. I'm gonna say something, and it's gonna be slick. I'm just I'm a slick talker. That's 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 my job. That's that's yeah. what I'm coming in to, coming in to do. Right. Um. But let, let's 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 before we move on, let's. Uh, visit Bow Wow real quick. Yes. Yes. Even if you talk about kid rappers, you know, and him not writing his own uh, raps early. Man, we had 
13 year olds, 14 year olds who was doing doing records back then. You can throw out A plus. I don't know if you know that name. If you, if you remember A plus, um, Shaheem the uh, the man child who was doing it with, with, with Wu Tang at 14, 15 years old, who was getting the pen in, and then somebody who was a child rapper himself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was writing my joints. Who was getting it in? I would I love to like hear I your verses about today Wiles. and put them next to Bow Wow's and just really break them down. But <laughs> at, at 13 and 14? Yeah, I would love to put y'all up against each other. I'm killing, Bow Wow. I'm, killing, I'm, I'm killing Bow Wow at 13. I'm killing Bow Wow now in our 30s. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go for it though. Continue. <laughs> and who, who who was the other one? Uh Nelly. Nelly. Yeah. Uh, give him some more respect. But as a rapper, he's not that. He's 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 not a, he's not a great rapper. But is he a horrible rapper? Does he make me cringe when he raps? No, he doesn't make me cringe. Um and he's had some humongous hits. Um rapping. Not just with the singing thing that he's done. He's he has some humongous hits rapping. Got to give him, give him, give, give that to him. Bow Wow's had big hits rapping, but, you know, Bow Wow wasn't the writer. And then when he started writing his own stuff, it just, it felt though. It wasn't it. He, he needed T.I. He needed J.D. And that was the only way he was surviving. And then when he started making his own identity, he was just somewhere else. Would he have had the potential, I think, if he would have stood on his own and tried to crab, hone his crab and gain his identity the way that he could? probably should have and became more of an ill rapper. He had the opportunity was there. It was just ego probably got to the best of him to where he didn't do what he needed to do to become a great rapper for the rest of his career. Right. I dig it. Well, I ain't got nothing to add to it. Uh, For the most part, I I agree with you. Uh, The only Mm -hmm. thing I'll add to it is I don't know if I agree with you because of my own bias of Bow Wow. That's possible. Mm Mm-hmm. To acknowledge, just acknowledging the fact I'm older than him and I always look to him as this little, this little crappy rapper, you know what I'm saying? Kid <laughs> rapper, you know what I'm saying? It could be my bias never allowing me to unsee him as this little as young that. dude. Yeah. So well, come on, know. man. When, 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 when Bounce With Me, Bounce With Me came out, you had to say like, yo, who's this little kid doing this thing? I did that. I, I did that. I thought back then. So I don't know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I could be biased, you know what I'm saying? Because we were teenagers. Yeah. I couldn't look at no little 11, 12-year-old with no respect. Think how you looked, if you were 15, 16, how you looked at an 11 and 12-year-old, like, you know what I'm saying? So No, I mean, but look, when, another bad creation, man. Like, you had adults who was, it was going. It was going. Dance stuff, a though, plus, man. You know what I'm saying? A-plus was going. A-plus was going. Well, A plus and us, we're about the same age. Same thing with um Shaheen. About the same age. But you couldn't deny that they was going though. You couldn't you couldn't deny that A plus had bars. You couldn't deny that Shaheen had bars. Yeah. I, I just about why it was more poppy. He he was more poppy, more more maybe. That, I can't that, that put was, my finger on why I think he wasn't good. <laughs> so that's just me acknowledging. I may yeah. be biased because I can't put my finger on why I didn't think he looked good. And there's always a possibility I'm just stuck in my mindset from back then and I refuse Could be. to let it go. Could be. Who knows? Could be. And that's a lot of us probably. Possibly, you know. Or maybe he's just bad. Who knows, man. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, let's review these sticks, man, and get up out of here. All right, let's do it, man. Let's do it. So, I got um, a Nika Bastika by uh, yeah. Drew Estate. I'm going to say at this point in this cigar, um, a lot of the earthiness, a little bit of the pepper kind of came back a little bit uh, towards the cigar, but very light, much lighter than it was in the beginning. For the most part, it was still the earthy woodiness, a um, little bit of the leather, like I said, and a little bit of uh, spicy sweetness that I picked up on uh, throughout the stick. It's done pretty smooth. Uh, I would say overall, a pretty solid cigar. Um, no real complaints about it, but it it also did make me like fall in love. I will go mm-hmm. with um we rank from one to five, five being the highest. I go with about a I keep wanting to say three point seven, but I'm fighting myself on it. So I'm gonna just go with three point seven. I'm gonna just say it because that's okay. what I feel. Okay. Okay, respectable, respectable. Um all right, so Romeo, Romeo E. Julieta. Oh man. It uh 
was, was an enjoyable smoke, man. I'm going to say I enjoyed it. What's crazy is I've never really picked up on aftertaste and like really paid attention to distinct aftertaste of cigars. Um, I haven't relit my cigar. It kind of it kind of died out a little bit. I didn't want to relight and, and ruin it with the butane. I, I want to relight it with the cedar. So, I, so I'm, 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 I'll get back to it later. Um, but man, I'm, I'm sitting with nostalgia. So I'm, I'm wondering the construction of Romeo and the consistency of their construction. Because for some reason, this aftertaste that I'm having really reminds me of South Beach. Really reminds me of that first time. And that could really be a testament to its consistency. For some reason, that aroma is very nostalgic. The aftertaste I'm having right now is really nostalgic. And it's taking me back to that first cigar moment. Um, I know it's not the exact, the same exact cigar that I smoke or the same type or whatever, um, but it's very, very reminiscent. Overall, the complexities of it came together, like I'm talking about like how they fused together really well as they were individual at first, and then kind of just boom, came together and made me like really enjoy it. Um, I'm going to leave this cigar off with a, with, with a 4.2. Well, I will smoke this again. Definitely. San Andreas uh, by Romeo y Julieta. Definitely, definitely a good one. Definitely a good one. Okay. Okay. 4.2. Great score. 4.2. Very respectable. Um, <clears throat> hey, before we get out of here, you know, I probably should have plugged this earlier on, but you guys, man, go check us out at our Vernon's, Vernon's underscore cigars at our Instagram. Go check out our people, uh, Secured Profits, man. Secured Profits. Plug, man, because we ain't had no commercials in a while. Man. Go pick up some gear, man. Uh, for those of you that's into your stocks and stuff, man, go go follow our people, uh, Secure Profits, over on Instagram and go buy some some product from them over at Teespring if you're still checking us out. Uh, they get yeah, man, get your, get your right, investment man. game up. Yeah, yeah. Investment now game it's the time up. to get it, man, while the market is messed up, man. So you can go ahead and it is. get you some good money by the end of the year because it's going to probably improve uh, sometime here in the near yes, future. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Hey, with that being said, we appreciate y'all for tuning in to the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar episode, backslash Scott. Scotty Pippen episode. Hey, <laughs> y'all be sure to tune in to next <laughs> week's episode of the Cigars and Everything Else podcast. We out. Yes, sir. Cigars up.